Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the farm. So today I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about my new reverse osmosis system that I got set up that I'm using for my maple syrup production. I'm going to talk a little bit about how it works, and I'm going to talk a little bit about whether or not I think it was worth the money. So what I have here is called the RO bucket. This is a self-contained unit. Comes with everything you need, all put together already, ready to rock. It's shipped to you all put together. Like I said, it's ready to go out of the box, box out of the bucket. Uh, this is the RB10. There's an RB5, an RB10, and an RB15. Uh, if you go to his website, therobucket.com, you can see that he has the ratings for how many taps each one of those buckets will support. And the RB10 was the one that fills my needs. So what the reverse osmosis filter is going to accomplish for us is through pressure, it's going to push the water through the reverse osmosis filter. And what that does is that's a very fine micron filter. Water molecules are really small, so it'll let the water molecules through, but it will not let the sugar molecules through. So effectively what we're doing is we're pulling pure water out of the sap, leaving behind a more concentrated liquid with a higher sugar content. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my, my, bricks, um, my bricks measurement thing to get an accurate reading of what my sugar content is in my sap straight from the tree. And then what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to do a measurement again coming out of the reverse osmosis filter and we'll be able to see where our sugar content is after we've pulled the water out. And effectively what it's going to do is it's going to double it. So then by the time we go into the evaporator, we only have about half as much water to boil off significantly less time spent on there, less wood burned, and we get to our end product much, much quicker. So here I have my bricks measuring tool placed down in there, and as you can see, we're right at about 2.6, oh, maybe about 2.7% right now. So the next thing you have to do is get the system primed up. So I've got the pump plugged in. First, it comes from our sap bucket over here through this pre-filter that's basically just like a Brita water filter all it's doing is filtering out debris and stuff and then nothing's going through these are two reverse osmosis filters right now nothing's going through there yet I'm waiting to make sure we get all the air out of the line and then what I'll do is I'll tighten down this needle valve here on the concentrate line and what that will do is it will build pressure up and it will start forcing that water through our reverse osmosis filters. And what we want to do is once we start tightening that down, we'll start to get permeate or clear water, clean water coming out of the blue hose. And we want to get them balanced to where we have the same amount of liquid coming out of each one. So I'm going to use two cups to make sure that my I'm getting the same rate of flow with the concentrate and with the permeate. So perhaps not the greatest view, but as I tighten down the needle valve, you can see it affects the flow rate coming out of my permeate, my permeate line, which is the fresh water line. So I'm gonna tighten it down, I'm gonna let it balance for a, I'm gonna let it kinda go to equilibrium for a second, and then I'll grab a couple of cups and I'll get it dialed in so we really got the same flow coming from each one. Now I'm literally just going to put each one of these hoses into a cup. And right now my permeate's filling up just a little bit quicker than my concentrate. So that means I need to open that needle valve up just a little bit so we can get them balanced. I don't know if you'll quite be able to tell. But there's just a little bit more over here in the permeate than there is in the concentrate. So I want to get those balanced so it's pretty stinking close to 50-50. So I got it balanced. So here's, here's our real litmus test. So this is, this is permeate. So this is fresh water. And you can see it's reading right at zero, no sugar. And then here we have our concentrate after it's gone through the RO filter. Get her to focus here. And you can see we're at about 5.6, about 5.6. 
You want me to start that boiler up, don't you, Max? It's cold back here, Dad. Start up the fire. So as you can see, running it through the RO filter, we were able to take it from about that 2.6, 2.7% sugar coming straight out of the tree to up to about 5.5, 5.6% after it went through the RO filter, pulling out half of the water, effectively doubling our sugar content, which is also going to effectively cut our boiling time in half. Now to get one of these RO buckets straight from the RO bucket guy, they start at 300 bucks. The, that's the RB5, the RB10 that I have retails for 415 could you build it on your own cheaper probably i didn't price that out um there's a guy that i follow on here uh, yb i believe that's young blood farms uh i know he built his own maybe go check out his channel and ask him about his kind of what he spent on his because i really don't have any idea i didn't price it out but if you're to that point with your sugaring operation where time is starting to be a factor I think that's sort of your tipping point to where you need to start considering reverse osmosis. Now, if it's just a hobby thing, something you like doing on the weekends, sitting around, tipping a few back with your buddies and making some syrup, you probably don't need to go this route. But if you're getting to the point where I was, where my sap was stacking up faster than I was able to boil it off, even with my new boiler, because unfortunately I still have a full-time job outside of this. So I can't dedicate as much time to this as I would like to. The RO filter has really allowed me to not feel so overwhelmed and it's allowed me to get through and get much more product out a whole lot faster. Every hour I'm able to process about 10 gallons of sap. So I'm able to take about 10 gallons from my raw sap bucket through the RO filter, get five gallons of concentrate and get five gallons of permeate. So brass tacks, would I recommend getting an RO bucket? I'd say yes. Now, you don't necessarily need to go the RO bucket route, you know, the name brand. You could build your own if you're handy with that sort of thing. I'm sure that there's plans and stuff available online. I'm sure that there's YouTube videos available of people that have built their own. But like I said, if you have reached that tipping point where you just do not have the time to get through all of the sap that you have or you would like to up your production and you don't know where you're going to come up with that time to up your production, I would tell you that reverse osmosis is definitely the route to go. So for what they're worth, those are my opinions on reverse osmosis. If you have any questions about it, leave them down in the comments below. I'll be sure that I get back to you guys. As always, thanks for watching. I can't believe how much the channel has grown. I'm creeping up on 2,500 subscribers. Like six months ago, I had like 52 people following my channel, and it was all people that I knew. So really appreciate you guys watching. Really appreciate all the interaction. The boiler is going to be up and running all day tomorrow. I'm sitting on about... 80 to 90 gallons right now that I'm going to get it all processed with the RO tonight and then it's going to be about 24 degrees overnight and the mid to upper 50s tomorrow so I expect the trees to just absolutely be gushing be able to keep the RO going all day tomorrow probably be able to keep the boiler going most of the day tomorrow it's going to be a real productive day so if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to hit that like button leave something for me down in the comments subscribe if you haven't already and until next time guys we'll see you